now entering his senior year at Franciscan University of Steubenville, Rafe is studying both theology and communication arts. He hopes, after graduating, to enter the Catholic media world. This is a Know His Love story. Uh, towards the beginning of my high school career, like high school years, the first couple of years, um, I was I, I was very active with uh, the youth group at my parish, the life team program there. Um, it was it was very, very, uh, very good program. I'm very grateful for it. Um, but you know, you go to you go to the, the the life nights every Sunday after mass, and there was always one or two things during the week to go to too. So I was very active in that sense. But um, kind of outside of that, how I carried myself wasn't necessarily reflective of that um particularly um how i would go about romantic relationships um there was definitely a kind of a gap between how i I carried myself around girls in that capacity versus you know how i would be in church or how i feel like someone who should have been acting like that um uh, it was definitely hard because i would kind of see myself as almost as a phony you know kind of someone putting on putting on a facade, putting on a face when I go to mass and I act like I'm this good person. Um, you know, that I'm then, you know, behind the scenes, I'm kind of carrying myself in this way. And, you know, I, I, I just would try to justify it to myself saying, Oh, it's like, it's not that bad. You know, I could be doing worse or, or I know, like, I know this person says they do this stuff with girls and I'm, I'm nowhere near that, but you know, in any capacity, it was nowhere, nowhere near how I should be treating how I should be treating girls, how I should be treating myself with, with girls. Um, if I was really taking, um, what I, what I was learning in church, what I was kind of experiencing, um, as far as God's personal relationship with me, um, it was, it was, I never doubt, I never doubted God's love for me. I would say I always knew it was there. I definitely did not feel worthy of it. It was more like, I would, I felt like, you know, if God, God loves me, you're supposed to love everyone, but it, feel, it doesn't feel like, you know, like a personal you, Rafe Lewis kind of love. It's like the more like blanket love that I kind of fall under just because I'm, you know, another one of the people here on earth. Um, yeah, so it was just, it was, it was really, that was kind of a time where, you know, it was, it was hard to, to break out of the cycle that I was kind of in. Um, just like, I, I mean, I was, you know, I was trying to find, trying to find a genuine, you know, love and affection. I was just going about it the wrong way, and I wasn't really um, letting God into these relationships. Um, and when you when you don't make an active, make an active effort to do that, then it's hard for those relationships to really have, uh, really have a fruitful effect. So I kind of um, was struggling with that for a while, and you know that 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 made it made it, say, made it hard to to see myself as the as a, as the son of god that uh, with the dignity that i that i was that i inherently have and then also with the, the daughters of daughters of god that i would i would um i would be i would be around to associate myself with uh, like that's that's the whole that whole aspect of being sons and daughters of god when that's taken taken out of any kind of relationship, whether it be a, a romantic relationship or a platonic relationship, any kind, then, then it, it makes it harder for that relationship to be at all fruitful because at the core of, of any kind of, any kind of love needs to be that kind of, that inherent love of someone for being made in the image and likeness of God. And, and that um, just really wasn't, wasn't something that I was, that I was bringing to these relationships and that made it, that just made it hard for me to, to grow, to grow spiritually. And and like, that was something I was struggling with for a couple of years. Uh, Well, almost unfortunately, it really took me going off to college um, for this change to kind of happen because um, even at Franciscan being a a very uh, active uh, university in terms of, terms of the faith compared to a lot of other universities that um you it still becomes you know like it becomes your you have to take it and make it your own as opposed to like in high school you can go to your youth groups and you have like 
something to go to and that kind of it will be um, something to keep it going. Um, in college, you kind of have to have to more actively seek it out. And I was very blessed to make a lot of solid, um, solid uh, relationships. I met a lot, a lot of great guys um, who were uh, strong in their face and they kind of helped me to uh, grow in, in mine and um, kind of started with, you know, loving yourself and accept and finding ways to grow closer to God um, at the personal level. Um, and once, once I was able to, to do that, then it started translating to um, my relationship with others and in, in all capacities. And, and again, like it didn't happen. It didn't happen overnight. It took, it took, it took a, it took a while. Um, first couple of years of college to kind of find the relationship to find the, these, these, these groups of guys that I'm, I'm still good friends with a lot of them. Um, and to be able to grow with them enough, just as, as guys that you're able to get, to get into those deep talks and then, um, have those kind of conversations and those experiences together where, where we would grow together, um, as men. And, uh, that, that pays dividends in, uh, just, you know, all aspects of your life. I was, I grew uh, stronger in my spiritual life. I grew in my relationship with others and relationship with myself. And um, it was just, it was, uh, it was very, it was um, very enriching, um, especially like looking back, I didn't have a lot of solid guy friends in high school. That was just the way it was, you know, in youth group, it was maybe like a three to one, four to one girl guy ratio at, at a lot of things um that's just how it goes like i feel like guys just aren't as drawn to that kind of stuff i mean i mean I, it is what it is um but definitely uh getting to college finding a lot more solid uh solid men to associate myself with and that really um it, there was there was a, a general sense of of uh of community and there's also a sense of accountability with some, like a few of my super close friends, like my, my sophomore year roommate, I could talk to him about pretty much anything, any struggle I was going with, going through. Um, and like, I felt comfortable telling him and he wouldn't, he wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't, you wouldn't act, you wouldn't, uh, judge at all. It would, it would just be like, Hey, that even if it's something that he never personally struggled with, he would just, you know, he was so, so relatable. And just so like kind with uh, with the help that he had given me, and it was something that I'm very grateful for because um, even with my best friends in high school, um, I could never really like talk about some stuff just because it would just be weird. And and even if if I wanted to, I felt like that they wouldn't really wouldn't want to. But with my one buddy, um, it just felt like like I could just open myself up to him, and then the, the, it would just be he was so he was so receptive of it, and um, and he was also the kind of guy that would, you know, call you out on stuff and, and, and you wouldn't just kind of like brush it off. You kind of say, Hey, that, that's not good. That's something you need to change. But again, it wouldn't be in a judging way. It would be in a, in a strictly loving way. And that was really something I hadn't experienced until you get into college. And that was something else that was very, that was very, um, um, uh, very helpful in in my, you know, in my growing as a person and me being able to accept, you know, accept love and in turn being able to, to give it out in, in a more, in a more Christian way. Um, I would say that it is an invitation to one of, one of probably the most, probably the most beautiful relationship that there is because this it means that we are not just you know we're not just the created we're not just beings with you know god as our creator and we owe him whatever respect you would owe to a creator but it's but more than that it's it's an invitation to you know receive this this love and um and being this this son and daughter or daughter of god um it's just a beautiful just a beautiful you know, notion. Um, and it's something that is very, very unique and something that um, I feel, feel like I 
I take for granted a lot, but um, it really comes with, you know, the innate sense of worth that no matter how much you think you're unworthy is that you don't know yourself as well as he knows you. And um, regardless of how much you push yourself down, he's always going to, to lift you back up um, and love you with uh, such a, such a love that is, that is so much, so much more than the strongest love, you know, on earth, whether that be a parent, whether that be a friend, whether that be a spouse, uh, whatever, whatever that, you know, purest form of purest form of love that you experience on earth. It's, you know, a hundredfold, ten hundredfold more, infinitely more, um, is, is, is that love of God. And, and he is giving that to us through no merit of our own. Um, but just that, that beauty that we can accept that, um, and, and, and partake in that, um, regardless of how many times that we've stumbled, how many times we failed, we can always go back to him. You know, the sacrament of confession is a beautiful thing and he will always, you know, accept us back, welcome us back in, in open arms. Um, I would have to say one of my favorite ways would be just through my parents. Um, I've been very blessed to have a very, uh, close bond with both my parents growing up. They've been very involved in, in, uh, my, my faith life. Um, both my parents went on multiple, uh, life teen trips with me, whether that be a Steubenville conference or March for life, um, as well as athletics. Uh, my dad coached me in, in every sport I've played in, uh, at some point. And even, even this past weekend, um, we, uh, the rugby team went on a trip to new Orleans and he came along as a, you know, assistant coach slash enthusiastic dad. Um, and he was just, you know, just, he's been with me every step of the way. Um, and again, uh, my mom's been very supportive of, of everything that I've done. Um, and just, uh, being able to do, uh, experience, you know, feel like their, you know, unconditional love and their support in, in everything that I've done and, you know, always being there for me, always being there for me, even when I'm going, you know, through rough spots and in, in whatever aspects of my life. And then just being able to sit back and then again, go back to how, how much more is, is God's love for me than this love that I'm experiencing. Um, so this being able to feel his love through them and then, uh, being able to, um, you know, when I'm sitting and I'm, I'm uh, whether, whether I'm like listening to the rosary on my way to work or, or whatever, if I'm just, you know, praying in my room, beginning of the day, end of the day, and just meditating on that love, personal love, the love of the Father, and just being able to just kind of sit back and just take in what it really means that his love, how, how, how much he loves, um, he loves me and how, how much, how much he's able to, you know, make that love known through the relationships that I have, how he's able to kind of give a glimpse of how much he loves through the, through the people around me. Um, I would say one person that comes to mind is just someone who, has experienced uh, some loss and hardship in their life and it's kind of caused them to stray away in their faith. And um, I would have to say that I, even though I cannot, I cannot uh, know exactly what you're going through, not know, not having experienced those exact losses and, and hardships, um, I could just, I would just say that just to stay, to try to stay open to God's love because, because, you know, again, it is so infinite that if we, if we, if we give ourselves to him, even when it's hard, that is when it is most fruitful. I feel like, because it's easy to it's easy to thank God and to praise God when it's, 
when life is going easy, when life is going good. But when it's it's hard, then it's he want he's he wants you that much more. He's calling out to you that much more. And he asks that you only trust him and stay open to him. And I know that it's hard. I know it feels like he's against you. And I know that I feel they might you might think that he doesn't love you. And and like I can't answer why something's happened in life. It's feel sometimes it feels like he's not there, and I understand that. But I would just say that if you remain open to him and you don't you don't turn your back on him, um, he's never gonna turn your back on you. So if you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna call out to him and then him turn a blind eye or him turn your back to you, like your your pr- your prayers your cries won't fall. Um, upon a deaf ear, he will hear you, and and it might not, and it might not be within you know when we think it should happen. But he will, he will bless you. He will guide you towards his will. And again, like it's it's hard when we think this something should happen and it doesn't happen. Um, and like you know, God, God doesn't say no to our prayers he'll either he'll say yes or not now or i have something better planned and again it's hard when you're experiencing loss you wonder why this what has happened why is this feels there's just feels like there's, there's no way for good to come out of this um and I, that's something that i struggle with myself like sometimes like i i see i see stuff happen in the world like with with death and and, and disease and all this and natural disasters it's hard to it's hard to understand why these things would happen but i always have to say that just not not giving up not turning away staying open and just going back to him is it's what's ultimately going to bring back peace going to bring back hope going to bring back joy because we're not going to find those things on our own. We're just going to end up being, being, being bitter, being, being down. And we're not going to, we're not going to be able to get ourselves out of this hole that we've created for ourselves. And it's only going to be through, you know, through turning to him and, and calling out to him that he is going to help you through these, these struggles, these hardships these these obstacles these setbacks and that's the only way you're going to get through those is 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 through him and it's not going to be on your own um so just just not not giving up hope um throughout all this thank you for listening to rafe's story I would love to share your story as well. Please connect with us on social media or by clicking on the join us link at knowhis.love.